that the early 20th century was a time of radical change in naval design is well known and accepted. The launch of HMS Dreadnought is an obvious point, rendering all previous battleships obsolescent at best. Much the same could be said of HMS Invincible and the armored cruiser as a concept. Submarines and torpedo boats also saw similar developments during this period. In a time of such rapid development in technology, some ideas came up that were incredibly wacky and never really went anywhere as a result. Historical curiosities and dead ends, but still worth taking a look at for any student of naval history. One of those was the torpedo battleship that was tossed around by the United States Navy. This was a classically early dreadnought era kind of design, seeing an opening by advancing technology and jumping in head first. It was also classically early dreadnought era in how it was quickly overtaken by improved technology and left in the proverbial dust. There is not much material to cover here, so this will be on the shorter end. Regardless, it is something I wanted to cover for those interested in the more unique design ideas. To begin, this was an idea born, much like submerged torpedo tubes on capital ships, by the increasing range of torpedoes. As these became more viable weapons, and improvements in fire control for big guns lagged behind, people began to get ideas. Not necessarily great ideas, as it would turn out in practice, but ideas nonetheless. It should be little surprise that, with torpedoes considered a viable weapon, the idea came to make it the primary weapon. A torpedo could, theoretically, sink a ship that shellfire might not be able to. Or, at the very least, sink her faster. As early as 1903, American officers were getting the idea to arm a battleship primarily with torpedoes. This initial idea didn't go terribly far, as battle ranges began to overtake torpedo developments once again, but it would be revived by one Commander Schofield in 1907. In that year, he presented the Navy Department with a 23-knot ship that would be, directly quoting here, essentially unsinkable by shellfire. Heavily armored and fast for the day, this ship would sacrifice almost all guns in favor of torpedoes. To the tune of only carrying 12 5-inch cannon, but no fewer than 16 submerged 21-inch torpedo tubes. The simple logic was that a ship of 23 knots could fire new, longer-range and faster torpedoes into an 18-knot battle fleet with practical impunity. She could outpace her enemy, and if they managed to get guns on target, be heavily armored enough to resist their fire. With two such ships and a fleet, one could launch a barrage of torpedoes, and if the enemy fleet maneuvered away, the other could launch her torpedoes and counter that move. All well and good, and actually somewhat resembling Japanese cruiser and destroyer doctrine from decades later. However, war games demonstrated that such a ship could be, even if not outright sunk, at least mission killed by shooting up the upperworks. Moreover, this was 1907. Judging an enemy battle fleet to be as slow as 18 knots was not a good idea. Dreadnoughts were springing up in every major navy, and one of the key facts of a dreadnought is that she should be faster than the pre-dreadnoughts. That's not even counting the Invincibles, which entered the water later that year, which were faster than the proposed torpedo battleships, carried enough weaponry to make the heavy armor a moot point, and were a harbinger of later designs to come each of which got progressively better and more capable. As one could probably expect, the Navy ran further war games with battle cruisers included and a more reasonable fleet speed come 1911. The result is... something you can probably guess. The torpedo battleships were wiped out before they could close to the point of using their main weapons. Gunfire was more accurate at longer ranges, rendering the supposed superiority of the torpedo an open question. As such, the Navy soundly rejected the idea, looking instead to a more traditional outlook of torpedoes on destroyers and a couple of tubes on a normal battleship. Schofield proceeded to throw a bit of a fit when the Navy rejected his idea, with Friedman stating that he called the games rigged against his ship. He would not give up, though, continuing to develop designs alongside one R.H. Robinson through 1912. These eventually gave up on being heavily armored and unsinkable by shellfire, 
and by the end were more accurately, and I'm being completely honest when I say this here, utterly, ridiculously oversized, protected cruisers. Not even battle cruisers, because the final evolution of the concept lacked an armor belt in favor of just an armored deck and barbettes. Nonetheless, they're a continuation of the concept, so I'll cover them in brief here. At this point, it was apparent that torpedoes alone were not enough. The designers accepted that some heavy weaponry was necessary, and that the ships would have to be able to close with the enemy, even against battlecruisers. The result was an increase of displacement into the 30,000 ton range. The ships would carry anywhere from 4 to 6 14-inch rifles, mounted in twin, triple, or even a single quadruple turret. They retained a heavy torpedo battery, and had some interesting secondary battery ideas that I'll cover in a second. While the very earliest designs had armor belts somewhat in line with either a standard type battleship, roughly 14 inches thick, or a battlecruiser, 7 inches thick, by the end, they ditched a belt entirely. Instead, they were only armored with a 4-inch deck and barbettes of the same thickness for the two twin 14-inch gun turrets. The final design, as such, was a giant protected cruiser, at least an armor layout, as a result. A giant protected cruiser fitted with four 14-inch rifles, eight 21-inch torpedo tubes, and no fewer than 40 6-inch secondary guns. She's more of a secondary monster than a torpedo monster at that point. All of that ended up coming out to 36,000 tons in the final design document, which on a ship 890 feet long that could go 31 knots, that would have been a ludicrously large and expensive ship that was hilariously vulnerable to gunfire and really didn't carry the firepower, even in torpedoes, to justify that size. It should be little surprise that the Navy never seriously looked at it, and instead decided to just continue fitting torpedo tubes to traditional battleships. Still, it's the kind of weird and wacky design that one wishes they could have seen in action, if only for the novelty. Would probably have sucked for any men sent into combat aboard her, though. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you in the next one.